What's up guys, Johnny here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna bring you something which I guess I'm gonna call yet another drone build. Um, I don't know what it is about this hobby. I don't know what it is about me, but I just can't help myself from getting new drones. I always wanna try new technology. I wanna try new motors, new everything and just see how they do. So anyway, today I bring you one of those such things and that's this drone right here. Now, this drone's actually pretty similar to one of the ones I had before, which is my Martian build. Um, but there's a few key differences that I really want to check out and compare. So, this build, first off, is an X-Hover R5LX. Now, the L basically means it has longer arms, which in this case means it has the stretched X design. I've been really curious about trying out a stretched X. Um, I see lots of guys running for races, say it works really well with keeping the um, air clean behind it. I guess the theory of the stretch X is that as you're flying forward, it moves the front and rear motors further apart so that the air that's being disturbed by the front motors is less likely to be disturbed by the back motors. Now, if you look at that in contrast to my Martian X, which is actually a squashed X, as it flies, the back motor is really close to the front motor, so it's flying through a lot of dirty air, and I guess that impacts the flight characteristics. Now, this is probably my favorite quad to fly currently, and I don't really notice it that much, but maybe by flying these back to back and comparing, I'll see the difference. Now, the other key thing here that I really didn't like about the Martian X is it's really heavy. I mean, just the frame alone, I think, weighs something like 130 grams, um, which is a friggin' tank. Now, the components on here are also pretty heavy. These Emacs RS2306 2400 KV motors are really heavy. These 30 amp little B uh, 6S rated ESCs are really heavy. Um, this big old PDB that comes with the Martian is really heavy. And just the whole thing, when I have the GoPro on there, it's somewhere between 620, 630 to 680 grams, depending on what kind of battery I run. I think 680 is at the 1800, and 620 is with the 1300. Now, this drone, first off, buying a high quality frame from X-Hover, it's really nice. Um, just the feeling of the carbon's different. It seems like it's equally strong, maybe even stronger, but it also seems to be lighter. This frame by itself weighs in around 80 grams. This frame is a full 50 grams heavier than this one here. That's just kind of crazy to me. They don't look that much different substantially. This one's actually a little bit bigger footprint. Um, so that 50 grams really adds up. Now, I did add a lot of heavy components here too. So again, I got the RS2306 motors. I actually like that these aren't the white tops, rather the black tops. They almost look like the straight, you know, 2205 red bottoms. Now, the key difference with these motors though is, ever since I bought the 2400 KVs, I really wanted to try the 2750. I always wondered, should I have got the high KV version? Well, now I've got it and now I can compare and now I can see how they do. Now, as you can see, I also put the GoPro mount on here. Now, on this particular build, I'm also running the Betaflight F3 board, and I've been really curious to try this thing out. I had it for a while. I always planned on putting in a build, I just never got around to it. So when I decided to build this with the 2750 kV motors, I figured it was a perfect time to try it out. Now, what I will say is it was a pain in the ass to solder this thing. Not because of the layout, I actually really, really like the layout. I think it's really cool, really neat how they use both sides of the PDB. I actually like that you can flip it over and mount the ESCs. I think it keeps the wiring pretty clean. Now, for some reason, I think it might actually be the thickness of the pads on that board. My soldering iron just did not do a good job heating up the solder on those pads. It seemed to immediately dry. It was really hard to work with. Um, I think to keep working with this, I really need a higher quality soldering iron. Um, my soldering iron hasn't been an issue on any other board, but yet this one, it was really tough. So I will say though that the board itself, it feels high quality. It's actually pretty heavy for a flight controller, but you feel like you're getting your money's worth. So that was kind of nice. Anyway, for a VTX, I'm actually rocking the, the same VTX I have in the Martian, which is the Tramp VDX uh, from Immersion RC. I'm really enjoying that one lately. I really like having the wand. I like being able to read and set the channel without having to power it on. Um, just really, really cool to work with. For the camera, I'm currently running a Monster V2. Um, my feelings on the Monster V2 are kind of mixed. Um, I'll get into that in another build and explain why. Uh, the picture quality is great, but because of the widescreen and the way it works, it just, it's kind of hard to fly with. So at least it is on the other build that I have it on. Um, but I'll get back to it and see how it does on this. 
Now, the other key thing here is these ESCs are actually the Emax Bullet 35 amp ESCs. These are pretty heavy ESCs. Now, I mentioned that this frame is about 50 grams lighter than this frame. The total build also works out to be about 50 grams less. Now, that should make a pretty big difference. I feel like this one's too heavy. I feel like it doesn't get enough flight time. Um, but at the same time, I could have gone lighter on this one. This is not going to be my new racer. You might think it is because it's the Suresh Dex, but I figure if I want to do racing with the GoPro, I can break this out. But my primary racer is actually going to be another build, which I'll bring to you in a future video. Lots of builds. Anyway, I brought myself out here to the local park. I've set up a few gates as kind of a sample to, to fly through, and I plan on flying both of these quads through it. I also brought my uh, Real X X210 build with me, which is kind of like um, a standard flyer that I've been doing for a long time doing some racing with. They all support GoPros, um, so I can do some different comparisons and see how they fly. I'm really curious to see how this thing uh, works out. So far, I've only flown it in the backyard for one flight just to make sure it worked. Um, it seemed to work great, everything was looking good. Now let's put it to the real test and put it out here on the field and uh, let's go give this thing a try. Let's see how she does. All right, so I just ran that through, ran it with the Martian. I also tried a couple of packs with my Realac X210. And 
you know what, so far I'm really surprised. I don't know if it's just because it's my first high quality uh, carbon build or what, but it seemed easier to hit the gates than it was with the other builds. Um, so I was really impressed. I don't know exactly what was going on, but I really liked it. You know, maybe it was that stretched X. Maybe this actually does make a difference somehow with control. Maybe it was just the camera I was using versus uh, one of the other cameras. Maybe it was these motors, just the added torque gave me a little bit more control. Everything seemed more tuned um, actually than it was with the Martian. I think the Martian has some issues with the standoffs where it's not quite holding the screws well and so it's vibrating a little bit. So it doesn't control quite as well as this brand new build does. Um, I did have one issue as I was out flying is I did lose video once. Um, as soon as I unplugged it and plugged it back in, I had my video back. So I don't know what it was, but it went to straight static. Uh, which tells me it wasn't transmitting. So don't know what happened there. That really freaked me out. Um, but hopefully it doesn't happen again. And in that crash, my my camera came a little bit loose. So I'll have to figure out something to do about that. But so far, I really, really like this build. Definitely drains the battery quickly, but uh, it does so in style. It flies really well while it does. So, so far, I really like this. So if I want to race with a GoPro, this is probably what I'm leaning towards. But uh, for real racing, I think I'm going to drop the GoPro and I'll show you what I get in store for that. So anyway, guys, thanks for uh, taking a look at this new build with me. Um, I had a lot of fun here practicing the gates. I feel like I'm improving my skills, uh, which I really like. So hopefully I can do better and better in the future races. And as always, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>